thank you so much. Uh, first, to say thank you to the organizers for inviting me. And also, so far, it's been a wonderful meeting. I've met a couple of faces I know and also made some new friends already. And I'm very excited to uh, be here uh, in this very important workshop. So as I was introduced uh, by Dr. Senga, my name is uh, Benjamin Pugina, and I work at the University of Cape Town in South Africa, and specifically within uh, a unit that we call Vaccines for Africa Initiative uh, that is based within the School of Public Health. Uh, so I'm going to speak to you about um, some of the work that we are doing. How do I move this? That, that's missing. All right. Bless you. Thank you. Um, so I've got three goals for this presentation. And the first one is to tell you a bit about the niche or NITAC Support Hub project and give a bit of background to the project that I think it's useful for you. And also, I've got a goal of uh, telling you the rationale for giving scientific support, uh, specifically to NITEX. Uh, Dr. Joseph has excellently introduced to you uh, who NITEX are and what they do and how do we know whether they are functional or not. And then, so I'll give some um, sort of context as to why do we need to give scientific support to NITEX. And then I will end by giving a snapshot of um, evidence to recommendation process. And this is uh, the process that is followed by the SAGE uh, that uh, Professor Jason talked about when he was talking about the WHO position paper for rotavirus. Uh, before the recommendation is issued, you had uh, Professor Jason talk about looking at data global data and bringing that data together, summarizing it into a position paper. So I'll tell you briefly about the process. And this is a process that is recommended for NITACs when they are making a recommendation to their Ministry of Health. So let's talk about niche or NITAC support hub project. So it is hosted by VACFA within the School of Public Health at the University of Cape Town. So uh, on the right here, you see um, the picture of um, University of Cape Town. Uh, the university is next to good mountains, and it's a very nice environment. I mean, for those of you who have been to Cape Town, I'm sure you can relate to this. And uh, below that is the picture of School of Public Health. And it's a very, very established School of Public Health. And the key thing I want to mention under that, that website is that we've got many divisions. And I'm gonna highlight two divisions for health economics and health systems and policy, health policy and system. And also social and behavioral sciences because we work very closely with them to integrate those disciplines into the field of vaccinology and make that a very nice uh, foundation to support NITAX when it comes to scientific uh, skills. So um, the VACFA is, in a way, was actually the ideal home for the NITAX support hub or the niche project. And the reason is um, the three of us who are involved in running this group at the moment. One, who is Professor Greg Hasse, was the former chair of South Africa NITAC. And he had been a South Africa NITAC chair for close to 20 years. And uh, then my other colleague, Professor Rutani Moloiwa, uh, is currently a core member of South Africa NITAC. And uh, myself, I've been involved in supporting the work of NITAC through the CVAC initiative. So this was an initiative that was funded between 2008 and 2017 by the Gates Foundation to actually support the establishment and strengthening of NITACs, not only in Africa, but also in Southeast Asia. And um, we, we had 
quite a bit of insight onto the work of NITAGs and some of the challenges these NITAGs were experiencing, especially in the context of vaccinology. So when uh, Dr. Joseph showed you some of the vaccinology work that we do training for NITAGs, uh, it's premised on a very, very long history of us undertaking annual African vaccinology course for 17 years that target African audience and the course is designed to speak to issues uh, around vaccines and immunization that are pertinent to the continent. So looking at the rationale for why did we establish this project? I've already mentioned about, we had some insight, but if you look at the body of literature, so Immunization Agenda 2030 talks very clearly about decisions need to be data-driven, immunization decision, which is absolutely key. And if you look at this data that NITAGs and other policymakers need to use to make decisions, this information is coming from different types of studies. We saw some of them this morning, Dr. Kabore showed some data from Kilifi from South Africa, which is either clinical trial data or um, surveillance data. So there are different types of study design that contribute to the immunization and vaccines data that we need to use. So what you are seeing on the screen is what we call uh, evidence pyramid. At the very top, uh, you see secondary data, which is pretty much data collected from different sources, put together and summarized. And this is considered the highest level of evidence. So, for example, WHO position paper uh, that Professor Jason talked about could be seen, uh, it's a secondary data and falls at the very top of uh, the evidence pyramid. But then at the very bottom, you've got opinion um, piece. Uh, it could be uh, an opinion uh, article written by an expert and uh, also, you know, laboratory studies those are never used ideally to make decisions by NITAC because they are considered at a, a lower level of evidence. But still, they've got value in the process of vaccine development, uh, of course. So how do NITACs make sense of all these different study designs? How do they even access this information? We know NITACs are comprised of different discipline, you've got epidemiologists, you've got social and behavioral sciences, you've got even health economists and modelers nowadays, some who have not had background to the field of vaccines and immunization. So making sense of this data sometimes require a bit of uh, capacity development or training, and this is one of the rationale that we need to give scientific support to the work of NITAX. And just related to this, there was a two-day workshop that was held in UK, and this workshop was uh, coordinated by uh, Wellcome Trust and WHO. And what they did was to bring uh, NITACs together and also stakeholders that support the work of NITACs. And the questions that were being asked is, what are the challenges that we see now and in the future that NITACs are facing. And with the immunization agenda recognizing the importance of NITACs, it was important to be able to understand the challenges and what can be done to address some of the challenges. So among the challenges that came up was the issue of funding. And it has come up today and yesterday on uh, the talks that we had. Uh, and we had about uh, Somalia, NITA, uh, Somalia presentation yesterday talking about sharing experiences. So this is something that NITACs really like because it provides additional insight that support them in their work. Then the issue of capacity development. Uh, capacity development is a very broad term, but we were actually able to, and I'll speak to this later, we were able to unpack by engaging NITACs in Africa 
to understand what specifically does this capacity development mean to them. Are there some specific areas within that broad definition of capacity development that would be more prioritized by the NITAX in our, in our continent? And that, is, that actually informed what the activities of niche were going to be. And of course, improved access to NITAC tools and resources. I mean, in this meeting already, we are in day two, we had about lack of local data. And this is something commonly comes that there is paucity of local data for NITACs because as much as there's a lot of global data that is very useful to NITACs at a national level, some areas require very context specific evidence for NITACs to make decisions. And this is where the challenge comes in. So the niche was designed to see how can we work with partners to address some of these challenges, experience sharing, capacity development, and having improved access to NITAC tools and research evidence. So uh, when we looked at the findings from this workshop report, and then we looked at the literature, we made an hypothesis that, um, and something very important to mention is that CVAC, which, has, which had done incredible work for about eight, nine years in setting up NITACs in Africa, you had uh, Dr. Joseph talk about how the continent has done brilliant in setting up these NITACs. Um, that funding for CVAC ended in 2017, and there was a huge gap that was left in terms of how do we continue strengthening the NITAC that has been set up, and how do we also continue setting up NITACs in countries that do not have NITAC? And um, what we did to hypothesize is to, based on the lessons learned from the CVAC project, we said, look, we could leverage on the academic infrastructure within the School of Public Health and within VACVA and um, set up a, a sort of a sustainable mechanism which is anchored in a university um, system to support the work of NITAX. And, and this was easy for us to say that because as I said, we've been running vaccinology course for quite some time, 17, 18 years. And in those courses, some NITAX members come and we are able to understand some of the challenges they face. So we built on that ex ex um, experience uh, in formulating this hypothesis. And also the thinking was that the niche project would give scientific support, not operational, because operational, WHO has done a lot of work and continue to do a lot of work in terms of providing SOPs for NITAX to get set up. Uh, there is a NITAG resource center that has huge, huge amount of resources that are useful for NITAGs. And uh, finally, uh, through the support that we give as a niche project, it would accelerate the growth and maturity of NITAGs. You had about, it's one thing to set up a NITAG, and it's one thing for that NITAG to be functional. It's the same as vaccine introduction. You can introduce a vaccine, but the coverage, which is one of the key endpoints that you want after vaccine introduction, is you, you, can, you can have a challenge. So those were the key things that we wanted to achieve by saying, look, let's leverage an academic environment, which also can foster research, and also let's do a bit of um, uh, partnership, and let's make sure that we help NITAGs uh, progress to uh, higher levels of maturity, meaning that they make high quality recommendation on a timely basis, and these have higher chances of being considered positively by the Ministry of Health. So how we did this was to, we looked at the literature, we conducted online surveys, we had some uh, workshop, and this time it was virtual because it was in the middle of the COVID pandemic, and we asked NITACs, would you be interested in actually owning niche? Because niche, the idea is to be owned by NITACs in Africa. And if yes, 
what kind of support would you want this project to be giving you? And out of the 60 questionnaires that we sent, uh, the responses that we got from the questionnaires we sent, uh, 59, almost 100% of NITAC said, absolutely yes, we want niche and we are willing to be, to be working with them, with niche, so that we can get the support that we're missing uh, in our country but more importantly, to make sure that we work with partners so that we don't duplicate the effort, the support already that is being given. And this was very useful. We got funding from Wellcome Trust to do this, and we got funding, and the next was to set up niche. And um, I, I, I was speaking to um, and Dr. Anita from um, uh, John Hopkins and IVAC, and it was interesting, she found niche through the website. And the idea for this website is to make ourselves visible, uh, also make it a platform for night tags to be able to reach us. And I'll show you later how, as a night tag, you can reach us and request for a specific support. So this, in brief, is our work. Uh, we do training. Uh, this could be in vaccinology or in evidence-informed decision-making. We also give scientific support, which uh, incorporate specific specialized fields that many NITACs struggle to find, modeling and health economists, and also the issue of um, health system. How do you consider this aspect in your decision making. So having an expert with understanding of these fields has been, was flagged by NITAGS as critical uh, for their work. And we also talked about, uh, because we had some experience of using design thinking uh, in the context of in, uh, vaccinology, we thought exposing NITAGS to design thinking, which is literally looking at the problem from the user's perspective would be something good for NITAX to have exposure to, to be able to be innovative, to address some of the local challenges that these groups face. And research is also an important aspect for us because we are academic affiliated and by default, research is one of our core activities. We thought this could be done by understanding what are the research gaps that NITAX have, and uh, all evidence gap rather, and through understanding those gaps, we can go back, partner with our colleagues at the university and be able to generate some of this uh, evidence um, that is missing to support the work of NITAC. And we've got a help desk, which is literally a hotline that you can just log in and get to us with a specific request. So very important is to say that Niche is a very partnership-based project. We work with many partners, and if we cannot support you on your request, we've got a very high chance we can refer you to a partner who can support you. So this is our sim simplified uh, governance model. Uh, so on top, we've got the management board, which is represented by key partners. Gavi is represented, UNICEF is represented, of course, WHO is our key partner, is represented. And also we've got NITAGs from different regions by language. So we've got a NITAG member who is Francophone, NITAG member who is Anglophone, and NITAG member who is um, Lusophone. And these represent NITAGs of French, English, and Portuguese. And then uh, the users are the NITACs. The project is designed fully with NITACs in mind. And you can access our support services through WHO, uh, our Frost CD. You had uh, Dr. Joseph talk about CD. You can access us through the help desk that uh, we have on our website and also through uh, our website directly. You can email us. And those are the core services that this project give. Uh, I've talked about uh, all of them, so I'm not going to repeat that. And uh, supporting all this is uh, the team that I lead, uh, which is the niche uh, staff. Okay, now I'm going to go to 
the second goal of my presentation, which is to rationalize why give scientific support to NITAX. Uh, so evidence-informed decision-making is very important um, because you can be able to identify the evidence, appraise the evidence, and mobilize evidence. And this is with the interest to make sure that you can advance the use of safe and effective vaccines. So in the context of immunization and vaccines policies, applying evidence-informed decision-making approaches helps you to have uh, effectiveness in the program. And also you can make your program efficient and you can optimize. We had uh, Veronica talk about optimizing vaccination uh, program based on different vaccine products that are there. You can advance equity, something that we really, really need on our continent. Vaccines are supposed to advance equity. And also, you can be able to defend your decision as an ITAC using evidence-informed decision-making approach because the process, what, which I mentioned, evidence recommendation, is systematic and transparent. And that means that your decision can be trusted by the public. And very important to reduce the research waste. And you know research is quite, quite resource demanding. So very important to... Okay, sure. So another point to rationalize this is that um, if you look at the immunization program, the landscape has changed quite a lot. When we started the program in 1970s, there were only six vaccines, six antigens contained. Now we're talking about 15, 18 vaccines that are available for the program. So this adds complexity, and that's why NITACs actually need to be supported to navigate this complexity in um, the use of all these multiple vaccines. And also there are others that are not included in all settings. And also there are new vaccines in the horizon. Uh, this is very important also to look at the vaccine gap. Uh, when the program started in 1970, we, had, uh, we started the same with high-income country. USA is just a proxy of high-income countries. But you can see the, the gap has been increasing in terms of the number of vaccines available for a child born in Africa compared to the one born in the US. Besides that gap, also if you look at the coverage within Africa now, you see there's a lot of inequity. So this is one of the things that we need to support NITAX in making decisions to address some of these things. We heard about PCV introduced in South Africa, the first African country in, 19, in 2009. PCV vaccines first were introduced in the US in 2000. So it takes almost nine to 10 years before an African country introduces a vaccine after it has been introduced in a high-income country, which shouldn't happen. Hopefully it's not gonna be the same with um, the RSV vaccine. Also, in terms of life cause vaccination, which is something so important and uh, a part of uh, the approach for the immunization agenda 2030. Vaccines not just focusing on childhood population, but focusing on all age groups. And then the last part, which is my two, three slides, is just to give you a snapshot of the evidence recommendation process uh, that is used globally and that NITAX are recommended to follow. So it's a four-step process where you ask the question and there is a process of refining the broad policy question that you get from the Ministry of Health. For example, should Chad introduce uh, rotavirus, uh, vaccines for rotavirus or PCV? Then you formulate that question into a more specific using the PICO approach, which is population uh, intervention, comparison and outcome. Then you look at the criteria. What are you going to prioritize? What kind of evidence are you going to collect? And what priorities are you going to assign to each of these evidence? 
and then looking at uh, the evidence itself, which is now collecting the evidence to help you make decision. And then finally, the recommendation, which is to draft the recommendation and as a NITA vote on the recommendation. Uh, when it comes to the criteria, there are normally seven domains that NITACs use, and uh, this is to see whether the problem is a public health issue. For example, in the case of uh, pneumonia and in the case of diarrhea that is caused by rotavirus, is it a public health problem? And then consider the interventions, the vaccines themselves, what are the benefits of these vaccines, what are the harms, adverse event, we heard about those questions. Then look at the values and preferences of the target population. Are they going to accept this? Is this what they want? Look at acceptability by the public and other stakeholders. Importantly, look at the resource to make sure that this decision can be implemented. Equity, I cannot emphasize enough about equity because vaccination should advance equity. And obviously the visibility. Okay, that's the end, or that's the, the E2L framework that normally summarizes the, 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 the information that uh, NITACs make. And um, there is very good training that you can do with Task Force and CDC. Uh, that's the link, and happy to share with you that link that you can learn about moving from evidence to recommendation, all the four steps unpacked in details. And some of the things that we've learned is that, um, you know, being able to pivot on partners and networks available, partnership and collaborations are critical, and also aligning the support with the needs of the NITACs. Each NITAC will have different needs. It's always good when you support them, you understand what are their needs. And obviously, after training and after support, you can follow up to make sure that everything that needed to be done, NITACs are able to do based on the support that is given. So that's the end and acknowledgement to all the partners that I work with and also special thanks to the Niche Project team and to the management board for the strategic oversight of the project. Thank you.